Hi everyone, it's Rax. For the last week, I have been absolutely blasting Path of Exile. For years, people have been begging me to play this game instead of Diablo and try it. So here I am. I've beaten the campaign. I have cleared all 115 maps. I do have all four of my Void Stones. Um, I have pretty much a full Atlas tree. I only have a few Maven invitations to do, and then we'd be at 132 here. Um, I've maybe invested 20 divines into my lightning arrow um, character about to transition into tornado shot. So that's about my experience with the game. I wanted to go through and give my opinion of the different things that I've encountered in the game and give it a ranking out of 10, just in case anybody was wondering. And we'll come up with an overall score for Path of Exile at the end. Talk about the campaign, the maps, what it's like to be a casual or a new player or what I can imagine it being like for a blaster or a veteran, the season mechanics, the bosses, the economy, trading, theory, crafting, and the different builds in the game. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing is the campaign of the game. So what does Path of Exile have? They have a 10-act campaign that you must complete before you can start mapping. Now, I'm going to give you an unpopular opinion I might have this opinion because I'm new. I know a lot of people are vehemently against this, but this is my video and this is my opinion. I actually like the campaign, and I do not mind that you have to complete the campaign before getting to maps. It's kind of like dessert at the end. I'm going to draw a lot of analogies to Diablo 4. I played a lot of a lot of MMOs and RPGs, but the one I played a lot is Diablo 4. So, as an example, Diablo 4, one of the best things about the game was the campaign. The problem with Diablo 4 is the end game, not really the campaign. And you play it once, so you never play it again. That's the way that it goes. So I thought PoE's campaign was actually pretty great. I don't know, I don't know many games that have a 10-act campaign. I don't know if I can name a single game with a 10-act campaign. All of the zones looked really different. The bosses were pretty cool. Um, it felt like I was genuinely in different areas. I didn't read any of the lore. I don't got time for that. Skip every dialogue. I'm sure stuff happened. And it was cool, whatever. But in general, I, w I was pleased with the campaign, and I don't mind doing it at all. Now, if you've done the campaign a hundred times in every league, you've got to trudge your way through the campaign one more time, and it's driving you insane. I understand that. But apparently the blasters can get it done in like four hours. So that's not that big of a penalty in my opinion. So for all the people out there screaming that doing the campaign sucks, not sure that I agree, but maybe it's because I'm a new player. I'm going to give the campaign a solid, uh, I think I'll give it a solid eight. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've done it a couple times before. Didn't mind doing it. I'm going to make an all, wouldn't mind doing it again. Next season, have to do them again. Not a problem. All right, let's get into the mapping system. So Admittedly, I don't fully even understand the full way to juice maps, but uh, I'm learning slowly but surely. I've been doing dunes over and over because it's good for Legion. I call it dunes, where's my car? And there are so many things that I like about maps. I like how fast they are. I like how zoomy the game is. Um, I like how much you can manipulate what you're doing. Not only can you add, you know, the additional power from the chisels and stuff like that, um, but you can also make it rare with Alk Orbs. You can chaos it with Val Orbs. Sometimes you completely brick it. Sometimes you make it amazing. And then there's a bunch of other ways to make it a lot better. You can, I think you can add what are called scarabs in here. I haven't done that yet. You can pick these different things, which, for example, it summons the guy that does the sulfide, and I click that, and it gives me additional powers, and then you can follow the certain bosses. And uh, I think out of any endgame system, I, I spoke about this in Diablo 4 and Diablo 3 a lot, and also last epoch, but one of the greatest things for me about the mapping system is the way that it's connected with each other. The fact that you are trying to expand out it is a bad example because all of my maps are T16 now, I believe, because I have the Void Stones. But there was beginner maps and medium maps and then expert maps. 
And the fact that you have to do cutie patootie things like, I think over here is dunes. But if I put dunes as all of my favorite slots, then I was running out of maps. But when you drop maps, it has a very high chance to drop a connected map to dunes. So I look at Castle Ruin, Chateau, and Glacier. My chat told me Glacier is the best map of those three. Okay, so I throw Glacier in as one of my favorite maps, and the fact that I can bounce between them now gives me essentially infinite dunes maps. The fact that these kinds of mechanics exist, and the kind of like the tribal knowledge, and once you understand them, you're able to kind of manipulate the game into ways that you want to play it. There are some people that don't even do maps. They just sit in town and trade all day, and apparently those are the richest people in the game. Then the actual experience of running the maps is fun. You delete them very quickly. If there's a boss you don't like, you can just avoid those maps entirely. You can spec out of it. The Atlas Tree lets you manipulate the things that spawn in the maps as well. So you can build currency the way that you want to. Um, I'm sure there are ways to further improve the maps, but I don't know of an ARPG system that has this as built out as Path of Exile does. Um, probably the only, th the only thing, and I know there are ways around it, the only downside to maps is sometimes there are some affixes that completely screw you or the combinations of the affixes get so strong that you just can't even run the map. It's a way to sync currency. There's ways around it. You get this. You put the awakened sextant so you don't get reflect. I understand that there's ways around it, and that's fine. Um, but some of the some of the times you just get one shot it out of nowhere just because you juice your map too hard and your character couldn't handle it. I put all this together, and I think they've got the best end game system of any any game I've ever seen. So I guess I'm going to give it a let's give it a nine and a half. I'm going to give it a ten. I guess anything can be improved. Let's give it a nine and a half out of ten. It's beautiful. All right, as a casual and a new player. Now, even though I am a casual and a new player, I absolutely don't think that I count as a casual and a new player. The reason why is I use this lovely guide from Crouching Tuna. Shout out to Crouching Tuna and the, the Max Roll team. This guy just carried the shit out of me. I also have these lovely people on YouTube and Twitch chat, and I literally put in my title, Backseating Aloud teach me I'm trying to learn you know five leagues worth of mistakes in one tell me everything that i'm doing wrong and boy did i do a lot of things wrong and they just guided me toward doing the right thing so i essentially just had like a bunch of assistants around me just making sure that uh i was doing everything correctly i think if you started fresh knowing nothing about the game at all with no guide with no help I think the game would be extremely difficult to get into, and I think it would be very overwhelming. Now, as I learn more about the game, I think I understand a lot more why the game is as it is, especially in the end game. There are so many ways to solve the, pro solve the problems if you know how to solve the problems. When you go into your map and you see 10 different league mechanics, and eight of them you hate, and you don't know what to do, you just spec out of them. You just block them. Right here. Down here. You just block them. All these nodes are blocking mechanics, right? I don't have any ultimatum. I don't have any blight. I don't have any ritual. I don't have any of this. I don't have any breaches. I don't have any abysses. I want to do legion and gray peacock, right? Um, so, I can understand why... People always say, you can fix it, you can fix it, you can fix it. But as a brand new player that doesn't know all these things, people want to trade with me, I should have done D&D. &D. As a brand new player, it's just overwhelming. You don't know what you don't know, and it's very difficult. If you don't have a really good build, the game is very difficult. People always joke and uh, talk about, uh, it's a Quinn 69 build. Die in one hit and do no damage or whatever. Guys, don't pick on Quinn. He's a good gamer. Be nice to him. But um, I think the experience here would be bad if you don't have a guide or anything. 
Um, I'll give it a three. My experience wasn't bad, but uh, this is the major area of improvement. As a blaster and as a veteran, well, one thing that I could imagine, as I said earlier, um, is that the campaign probably gets old after a while, right? Not old for me, would be old for you. Um, the thing that I love about this game that I'm noticing is there is, it is practically impossible to make a perfect character. So I have invested what I would consider a shitload of time into this character to get something like this with the six links and the 20, 20 maxes, but then you could get a level 21 gems if you really wanted to. Um, I have spent a lot of time, you know, carefully trying to follow the guide and theory craft it exactly as it should be. And right now, my character is considered mid. And this isn't even late game lightning arrow. And this isn't even the right build you're supposed to be playing. You're supposed to upgrade it to tor Tornado Shot, which is so expensive, it would require me to do a lot more farming again. And that's, this is just to make a single godly character. And not to mention that you could make another one. And we'll get to it later when we talk about the builds. But the builds are so different and they can have such different purposes that that actually makes a lot of sense. Like this might be your mapper. And then you might do like a trapper that's like a really good bosser, for example. So other than the annoying uh, four-hour campaign, once you actually have all this down, once you actually know how to spec this atlas tree, by the way, I'm going to make my version of a beginner's guide. A beginner's guide to Path of Exile from a beginner, what chat taught me how to do, the very, very, very basics. Um, I'm going to make this guide for you and help you. Well, I don't look at this the same way anymore. I used to think that this was so complicated and my brain exploded the moment that I opened it. And now I feel like I have a very good understanding of what is happening here. I'm blocking everything except Legion, going over to the Searing Exarch nodes. I'm taking all the Legion stuff and specifically skipping the general stuff because they're too hard for me to kill anyway. And then uh, I pick up a couple of, what is it, Delve? The Delve nodes just to click the Sulfite, get some resources, buy the little single socket thingies, gather them up, sell them for some extra money and get the bus. That's what that note, that's what that tree did, right? Um, so once you have all this stuff figured out and you have all of your little macros and little, you're, you know how to use POB pretty well in the Awakened Trading site, quality of life in this game is probably very good. And I mean, this is a terrible way to put it, but honestly, the veteran players can probably take advantage of like new players' mistakes. I went over here to my stash and Boiler told me this. Shout out to Boiler from Maxwell. He said it's just to do this for fun. If you set the Divine card tab to public for 5 Chaos, instantaneously, once you switch zones, you get like 100 messages instantly. So there's, it's not even like expert players sniping. There's so many bots just sharking the auction house just or uh, the trading site just waiting for you to make a mistake. But... All of that is just quality of life to the pro and, and veteran players. So I imagine this is one of the best games if you really, really want to invest time into a game. So I think I'd give this like a nine. All right, now we get into the seasonal mechanics. I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to give my ranking for the seasonal mechanics in general, and I'm going to give some feedback on the seasonal mechanic this season because that's the one I've probably done the most because, well, it's the mechanic for this season. Okay, going back to the tree here. Um, again, as a brand new player, the seasonal mechanics are just going to simply overwhelm you. There's a big giant gray peacock. What the hell do I do with that? Oh, uh, this guy is digging for sulfite. What the hell is that? Oh, there's this guy with these like different cards, assass assassinate, negotiate, this or that. How the hell does that work? Okay, big gladiator arena, pick rewards, that's pretty easy. Legion, kill him once, kill him again. Okay, I think I can do that. Expedition, throw a bunch of bombs here, da 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 da. New player, this is very overwhelming. Don't understand how to manipulate this tree. It's just uh, just scrambled eggs in your brain. Um, as I look to it further, as the seasons have released, sometimes they take it out, they tweak it, they make it core, they put it back in the game, da 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 da. I think this really, really adds 
flavor to the game. It lets you really play the way that you want. And I think a lot of the season mechanics are truly different. It's not just mindlessly killing. There is a strategy to even this, the simplest of the mechanics that I've seen. Um, I remember the w only one other time that I ever played where I did Expedition, doing your bombs in the right order, trying to get the most logbooks. Don't pick the monsters are immune to chaos damage because I was playing Toxic Rain. Bricks the entire thing, this or that or this or that. There was definitely a, a method to the madness, and you felt very rewarded when you would actually gain some mastery in it and build it correctly. Then, of course, like we said before, the people that had been here for years and years and years and learned these step by step by step, um, they probably just enhance a lot to the game and with, with whatever build that you make that, you know, it's very suited for these end game mechanics that you want to pick. I mean, it, it just makes the game more fun, I believe. I think that Path of Exile, looking at it now and trying to understand the history of how it's evolved, has done a much better job of taking the things that it has created and finding a way to actually build it into the core game to make the game more rich, more diverse. Um, a lot of these other games are just taking out the season mechanics one and done. You can't find a way to successfully ingratiate them into the ongoing game. So... I think overall, not only from the design, but also from the implementation into the game, I think as I learn more, I think I'm going to give it like an eight and a half. I think this is pretty damn good. But I will give you some feedback on the current season. Um, so when I saw the announcement for the Wisps going, going out and the different ways that you can spec into it, I was really excited. I thought it was a very cool idea. Jump in at the beginning. Pick the rewards you want, juice your maps, uh, get a new ascendancy, spec into it, get the charms or whatever. I thought it was going to be very good. A lot of that did come true, I guess. However, for me as a new player, for me that doesn't have you know the strongest build in the universe, it was very difficult for me to find a single point at all in my gameplay, including right now, where the seasonal mechanic was worth it for me. When I first started doing it in the campaign, again, people are trying to help me. They say, Rax, don't do the seasonal camp, don't do seasonal mechanics during the campaign. If you're trying to get out of the campaign and get to the maps, it will always slow you down. Spending time in the campaign is a waste of time. Now that I've played more, I, I understand that their advice to be completely correct. When I would do it though during the campaign, it was very difficult. It was way harder than the maps or the, the levels I was currently doing. And the rewards were, I can't say they were bad. They did help me because I had practically nothing. Um, but it did not seem worth it at all. And e even as I continue to get stronger and stronger, and I'm doing T16 maps, I can blast them very, very easily if I don't do the mechanic. If I take the time to do the mechanic, I usually get nothing in doing it, but Rax, you can find a charm where 23 divines add one plus arrow. I understand that, but it's hard to find that guy anyway. I could barely even find the little teal uh, souls when I open it anyway. And then you have to do the map, and it makes the map quite a bit harder. I literally lose at least an entire map out of doing it, and in my experience, it's still not worth it. Now, there are people like Empyrean. I watch Empyrean. He was a, a godly Diablo 3 player. He's also a Diablo 4 player. I like him a lot. Him and his group are just absolutely using it to just dominate. They're getting, they have 30 mirrors already. Um, and, and they're just ruling, right? So there is an inflection point for the people that are smashing the, the uber bosses. This juicing doesn't even make the maps harder for them. And then it's absolutely worth it. My feedback here is, I think it's overtuned for like 99% of the population. It makes me, even though I really like the mechanic and I think it's a great design, the overtuning makes me not want to engage with it. So that's my feedback. I don't think you need to nerf it, nerf it drastically. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying at different points in my lightning arrow character's journey, it's never felt worth it for me. And I think a lot of people are feeling the same way. 
Okay, now we come to the bosses. I remember when I was pulling Uber Lilith, I heard, I heard v varying opinions. I heard that Uber Lilith was a way better design boss than any Path of Exile boss ever could be. And then I heard the complete opposite. Uber Lilith is absolute dog shit. Uh, the Path of Exile bosses are way better. I'm I'm a little I'm a little confused. So I I fought in my I have fought Sirius Maven Uber Elder X Searing Exarch and Eater Eater of Worlds. Right? Uh, there's like Simon says man. There's a Stand in the Lightning Orbs man. Fire Orb man. Big black ball overhead man. I don't know whoever they are. And uh, I thought the boss design was pretty good. To me, the to me, I I really enjoy WoW, like the the super ultimate world first raids. Um, I've always thought that Blizzard on the WoW side was pretty good at designing bosses. I remember getting farmed on four horsemen. Cthulhu was hard. Twin Emps, pre-nerf Muru, pre-nerf Phase 3, AoE, Mind Control, Vash. Um, I've seen a lot of bosses in my day. I played a lot of Lost Ark. I didn't get to any of the really good raids, but saw some of those, saw some of the world first uh, attempts there. I, I think the bosses are pretty good. And I think Uber Lilith is pretty good as well, besides the bugged hitboxes. I don't I don't really, I've mentioned this before, I don't really understand the tribalism. I don't understand why people have to hate PoE and love Diablo or vice versa. I honestly think the design is roughly equal. They each got some mechanics, they're cool, they're unique, and, and, you, just, and you just try to win. Um, I, was, uh, I, I was enjoying the boss fights. I was enjoying learning. You know, you die all the time in the beginning, and then you practice and practice and practice. You build some mastery, and then you beat the boss. That, for me, is the barometer of a good boss fight. I thought they were pretty good. Are they the best bosses I've ever seen? No. Are they the worst bosses I've ever seen? No. Um, let's say, I, I like, by the way, another thing I should say about the bosses is I like how you farm them. I like how you can go here to your map device and choose which one you want to build progress toward to get the invitation to go fight them. I love that. Because if you don't want to go fight them, you can just sell the invitation and make a lot of currency. And just build, build your, uh, build your wealth that way. So the bosses, I, I think uh, I'll give you maybe a more favorable rating than other people would. I'll give you an eight. I didn't think it was that bad. Okay, for the economy, um, the economy I think for an ARPG is maybe the best one ever. I'm trying to think of one that does it better. Uh, Diablo Four's trading is an absolute catastrophe. By the way, shout out to D4 trade. Love those guys. They're the only people that made trading even possible in the game, really. Um, I think the trade, the, the economy, the, the trading, the, um, the way to build wealth in this game is probably the best of any ARPG ever. Um, you, you got D2 JSP um, that kind of held, together, held it together for Diablo 2. Um, to me, when I think of like building an economy in one of these games, the first game that comes to mind again is World of Warcraft with the auction house. Um, oh, yeah, I mean that 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 alone could be a, a twelve-hour video over over the uh, over a completely different topic. Shout out to TSM uh, Muffin Man who works on Last Epoch now. He helped me. Uh, he helped me get rich in uh, uh, WoW TBC Classic. But anyway, the idea that you have awakened PoE trade, you can go through and you can find any item as a new player. I have no idea what this is, and I call it giving it the D, control D, and it's worth about, I don't know, three chaos, as long as people aren't price fixing at the top. You can instantly figure out how much it's worth, throw it in a tab, sell it, and make currency. You don't have to know what everything is worth. You only have to know how to price check it. All these different confusing currencies, as I learn a little bit more, is not too bad, again, with Awaken POE trade and the economy. If you find something worthwhile, even if you don't know how to properly use it and you suck at crafting, you can use it to your advantage and get rich that way. So for that, I'm going to give, let's give this one singular rating. 
I mean, it's probably the best in any ARPG ever. Um, the amount of currencies is probably confusing. That could be toned down. Let's give it a nine. Um, for theory crafting. So there is an external tool called Path of Building, which I absolutely suck at. And I am I'm not good with this whatsoever. But um in the in the very basics that I have learned from this and other tools, this seems to be one of the greatest theory crafting tools ever. Now I don't think I don't know if it's fair or not to um give Path of Exile credit for it an external tool, but I mean it exists, so I guess that's just how I'm gonna grade it. Um but I think this is just god tier. It even connects with the trade site so you can paste in an item to see before you bought it how much would this really confusing bow increase your DPS. You can paste the item into your character and you know check out whatever the right number is. The combined DPS here, you can check what your resistance is and your life would be. And you would know the answer before buying it. And here you can go through and make different builds once you actually know what you're doing. And, uh, I don't know, just make godly stuff. I'm sure if I played this for years that I would be spending at the end of... I probably, I'm guessing, the meta once you know enough about this game. So you probably spend 95% of your time in here and 5% of your time actually playing the game. So you can actually just calculate everything. Um, as, a, as someone with a math degree... This this is the shit I love. This is the way this is the way to put a smile on my face. And there are other resources too. But um I think for if you're a theory crafter kind of tied into being a blaster, but if you if you like to invest a lot of time, I think I'll give it like maybe a nine and a half. And I guess another thing to say about theory crafting, which kind of ties into builds, is there's so many different ways. Um to make a different build in this game. Like if you pick a, a different streamer, somebody's playing detonate dead, someone is playing uh lightning arrow, someone's playing uh SRS Guardian, someone's playing a right, righteous fire. And they're all so different. It it really adds to the class fantasy, which is um something that again really impresses me about the different builds of the game. Um I I I genuinely don't know what I'd like to build next other than I would like to build something tanky because I'm sick of playing the ultimate glass can. It's got to be something tanky, but I need to try a melee character. I need to try a, like a summoner character. I need to try a uh, righteous fire. Pox just raided me yesterday. Shout out to Pox. I got to try his righteous fire build. Um, you know, there's so many different builds that I have to try that genuinely look interesting and I'm going to be able to make them so much faster because not only does the, is this currency universal? You can just buy stuff for your alt, and you can also buy like twink leveling gear, which is just going to help you just annihilate everything. Um, but you can also just buy all the specific things that your guy needs. If my guy needs, I don't know, a, whatever, a 10 divine weapon, oh, a boom, done. There you go. Start, start on tier one, the basic maps with a, a 10 divine weapon, a six link, and you just destroy everything. Um, another thing about the builds, like, I know PoE is moving away from this a little bit, but I don't. I don't think the linking thing is that bad of a system at all. You link your uh, you link your main thing with a bunch of supporty stuff, and it just makes it do a lot more damage. And uh, the thing that I like about it is it's not exactly clear what the right answer is. It requires again a lot of theory crafting. There is no like one singular way to play lightning arrow there's a you know people have different opinions they said oh this support might help you you should play Val lightning arrow or this lightning arrow or some people say lightning arrow is stupid as hell you should just go straight to tornado shot da -da -da -da. you'd have roughly the same dps the fact that people can spend so much time in the game and not quite agree on the right answer to me is the definition of a great game because when it's very obvious the path that you should go, when there's only one way to do the character, it seems like the depth has been lost there. So once again, I'm going to have to give the build, builds... Uh, my voice is dying, sorry about that. I'm going to have to give builds like nine. With a little hat on top of it. Um, so overall, other than casual and new, the worst rating I gave PoE at all was like an eight. I've been genuinely impressed with this game 
I guess the only other thing that I could think of that would probably give it a very bad ranking other than casual new is maybe like the hardcore experience. The hardcore experience might be like a five. I see even the most veteran of veteran players dying to random one shots and reflects all the time. That might be like the only other thing that I can think of that would actually get a bad ranking. But I am definitely understanding after only playing for a week and having people just barrage me. By the way, I love you guys for 10 straight hours about everything that I was doing wrong and all the wrong thoughts that I had trying to convert me into at least a decent player. I can understand why people who invest so much time into this say that this is one of the greatest ARPGs ever. I, I agree with the sentiment. And that's why, I guess, have you noticed that I've been uh, running around on a surfboard and my guy looks like, I don't know, my guy looks like a god? The reason why is after I played this game for a few days, I went to the microtransaction shop and I bought what I think is the most expensive supporter pack. I gave Path of Exile $500, not because I wanted the cosmetics, because I wanted to support them for making this game and I want them to make PoE 2 great. So I was that impressed with the game that I just gave him $500 and, and now I have a surfboard. Um, so thank you for making a great game. Thank you for uh, the entertainment so far. I hope to get a lot of entertainment. I'm going to get a lot more entertainment from it and I hope that PoE 2 is a win. I would give Path of Exile probably an overall a 9 out of 10. And that for me is a, is a very high ranking. And then the other... The other question that I always get, and I, God, I've heard this five fucking million times. I've heard it argued every single way, forwards, backwards, and sideways. The question that I always get is, what's a better game, Path of Exile or Diablo 4? What I would tell you is, I like both games. I think PoE is a much better game if you're a blaster like me that wants to degen play a million hours. I, I, there, there's no debate. It's just better if you're a blaster. It's that simple. And I think Diablo 4 absolutely kills Path of Exile if you want to play it casually. It's, uh, again, I think it's very lopsided there as well. Um, the thing for me is this is the one that I would subscribe to because I like to play a lot. It's all about the end game and the theory crafting and the math and solving problems. There's always problems to solve, optimizing. So I would personally prefer. Right now, Path of Exile. Remember, Path of Exile, released in 2013, I believe. They have 10 years of development. They didn't have... When Path of Exile first launched, even the, even the people who love PoE would tell you, Path, when Path of Exile launched, it was dog shit. Now we have all of these seasons and seasons and seasons of mechanics. And these are the things, these are a huge part of the reason why the game is fun. And the uber bosses that they added. Will Diablo 4 ever get to this level? Honestly, probably not. I don't think that they're even, go this is not even the strategy that they're going for. They're definitely going for the masses. They're trying to make money. And the way that you make money is you appeal to the masses. Um, but there it is. If, if you want my honest opinion, I think PoE right now is more fun for me than Diablo 4. Would love to see Diablo 4 add in a bunch of other stuff. I'm also really looking forward to Last Epoch. Like I've said a thousand times, there's one more thing I want to say. I do not subscribe at all to this tribalism that people have. You have to love PoE and hate Di Diablo or love Pat Last Epoch, and this game sucks. I don't subscribe to any of this at all. I want all of the games to dominate. I want them to all make a trillion dollars, and I want all of them to make godly games. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm rooting for them all. Um, I'm pretty close. I think I'm in... Pretty good standing with 11th hour games. Would love to, however I can help Last Epoch be better, let me know. I'm very close with Blizzard. I'm going to help them make it better. Never spoken to Grinding Gear Games. I'm a nobody. I don't matter. But if you ever want to chat, love to chat with you. I, I don't know much, but we can chat in a way I play a lot of games. Anyway, this is, my, this is my opinion, guys. What do you think? Do you think I'm just a stupid idiot? I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow, hoping. It's going to be a difficult video to make. I'm going to make a beginner's guide from a beginner, and I'm going to teach you how to play this game in the most simple way you could ever imagine. Every other content creator that has made a beginner's guide, I haven't watched them all. All of them know more than me about this game, but that's not the point. I'm not going to try to teach you 
a million different things about how to be great as a beginner. I want you to get to this point, to your hideout with a map device and run maps and get through the campaign and win in as few steps as possible. That video is coming. I will be very interested to hear your feedback on that to see if it helped you or not. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.